Hi, I'm Rob. I'm Dave. And I'm Mr. Sink. And welcome to the Mr. Sink Show, where we show you how to improve your home. On today's show, we're talking about toilets. Don't you mean dunnies? Uh, how to replace your old one. And what to look for when buying a new one. And where that waste goes. We'll also be interviewing a master plumber about his tricks of the trade, and we'll also have some handy tips for you. Great, let's get started. Okay, so here we have the toilet. Um, as you can see, it's, it's a little out of date. Um, it is an old color. It has a larger system, which um, I guess is gonna use a lot more water than most of your new ones. Uh, the, the owners of the home would rather something a little bit more compact than that one there. This has a large system. Um, the owners have also asked for something which is easier to clean. You'll see around the back over here, um, there's a bit of a dust trap around there. So we're gonna look for something which is environmentally friendly with the use of water, better color, obviously, something more compact and easier to clean. So Mr. Sink, can you help us with this? Okay, I'm coming now, I'll come and measure. Okay, now we, we need to take some measurements of the toilet and I'll show you how it's done. It's actually quite simple. You just need to go around to the back of the toilet over here and you need to measure from the wall here to the center of the pipe. So I'm going to measure that right now. And okay, I've got my measurement. And now that I have my measurement, I need to check where the inlet valve, sorry, the, um, the water supply is to make sure that it's in a position, it's okay for the toilet, because the new toilets now are slightly different. So that's okay there. Now that I have those measurements, I can now go shopping. So, Rob, let's go shopping. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we're here now, let's um, choose a toilet. It's called the Dunny here in Australia. Well, we used to call it a Thunderbox. Okay. Okay, so where do we start? Okay, now, from the measurements, the only two that are going to fit is this one and this one. Okay, so what would be the basic differences between these? Okay, well the main difference is uh, shape mm -hmm. um, and design. And this one here has a ceramic toilet system. Mm -hmm. um, also has a nice soft closing lid. Okay, so it's probably not as good looking as this one here. Well, the difference between this one is, this has also got the soft closing lid. It's also got the ceramic uh, cistern, mm -hmm. but the bowl sits right up against the wall, which makes it really easy to keep clean. Okay. One thing I remember, the pipe comes from the floor, doesn't it? That's right. Okay, so they both got that from the floor? That's right. What's That's that called again? It's Sorry? called S-trap. Okay. And the one from the wall is a? P-trap. Ah, P-trap. Okay. So, yes, th these two will fit. And I also remember you mentioning that she wanted something that was easy to keep clean, correct? That's what lady of the house is a bit of a clean freak, so she wants something that's easy to keep clean. So this one here actually goes right up against the wall, which I'm sure she's going to love. And check that out. Oh wow, look at that. That's, that's, a, that's a good idea. Yeah, makes it easier for keeping clean. It's, uh, you can take it outside, hose it down, and, what not. You can also get around the hinges and clean as well. Mm -hmm. And to put it back on, it's just a click like that. Good idea. And it's also pretty comfy too. Ah, I just need a newspaper. Okay, now we're ready to start pulling the toilet apart. Okay, let's clear up the room. So I'll get rid of all this. And this. And the most important thing to do first is turn the water supply off. So I'm gonna turn the water supply off here. So now that's off. Then I'll empty out the toilet system. Make sure there's no water left in there. Okay, it's empty. Beautiful. So, I will start with 
the actual system. So I'll take the lid off first. I don't do that. Actual water supply into the system. And there we go. The technical term, the correct word for the toilet bowl is actually called the toilet cistern. Ah, got it. And we get it out, and that's it. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? We don't leave it on the nature strip. You've got to dispose of it properly. Mr. Sink. When you flush that toilet, have you ever wondered where all that waste goes? Let's find out. So we're here at Melbourne Water, and here we've got uh, someone who's going to take us on a tour today. Brad, my name's Dave. Dave, pleased to meet you. Mr. Sink. Mr. Sink, Brad, pleased to meet you. Welcome to the show. Rob. Rob, pleased to meet you, Rob. So today um, on tour, uh, what do we expect to, to learn? Uh, so, so the tour is really about saying when you flush your toilet and, and, and send your sewage to the Western Treatment Plant, how it gets treated, what we do from a treatment point of view to take it through and turn it into clean water. This, this is the start of the treatment plant. Yep. So you flush your toilet um, in, your, in your house in Melbourne. About eight, about eight hours later, it arrives here at Western Treatment Plant. As you can see from the sewage, the sewage is mostly water. It's the water from your toilet, it's from the kitchen sink, from the laundry, from your shower, and it's also water from the, the major industrial activity around Melbourne. What comes in is 99.5% water and half a, percent, half a percent solids. So I've noticed you can't see any floaty bits or chunks. Um, I'm presuming that everything comes here after the toilet or shower? Yes, everything comes here. Um, it's been through two pumping stations, okay. so you don't necessarily, some of the chunky bits get mixed up in that process, um, but what you will see and what we've got to be careful about is occasionally you'll see some plastics come down. So just from out of curiosity, what foreign things do sometimes go into the toilet that shouldn't be there? Um, it's surprising what you find. So, so, so we find a lot of cotton bud sticks, so people for some reason flush cotton bud sticks down the toilet, don't know why. Um, see a lot of cream bottle lids, historically, which I could never work out why. Wedding um, bands? Um, wedding bands, potentially, <laughs> but really but really hard to find. We, we have people who have um, lost their wedding band. We turn up and ring up and say, can you find it for me? Um, it's quite hard, obviously, in, in we, we get about almost 500 million litres a day of sewage. 500 million, 500 million litres a day of sewage. So finding a wedding band, that obviously is difficult. Oh, well, now we're going off to the next stage of the um, plant. Hey, Rob, did you fart? Oh, no. She just closed your window. Whew. Whew. The stench is getting worse. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I closed that window. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So where are we now, Brad? We've now come down through the treatment plant to the first part of the actual treatment process that treats the sewage. Okay. So what we've got here is a covered anaerobic pond. And this is where we do most of the removal of the carbon or the organic matter. So all the, the things that come down in your sewage and we, there's bacteria in the water that convert carbon compounds to methane. And methane gas bubbles off and then we suck off the methane gas, send it across to a plant run by AGL who do power generation for us and they sell us back electricity. So basically we can run the whole plant that you see as we go around this tour from the gas that comes from the sewage that we're treating in the first place. Oh, cool. Now in the background there, I can see they look like massive sprinklers. Yep. So, 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 so they're, they're aerators, okay. which is like, I, I describe them like a big bar mix. So you've got you know, your stab mixer. Yep. So put it in the water, water sprays out. That's basically the same thing, doing, doing an aeration job. That's throwing the water through the air, mm -hmm. gets oxygen into the water. So after we've done our anaerobic process and done, there's a limit to how much you can remove and capture as methane. Mm -hmm. Once you've done all that work, the next job is to then get rid of the odour. So we go into an aerated process, which adds oxygen to the water and rather than producing hydrogen sulphide, it then stays as sulphate and stays dissolved in the water. So that, oh, gets, wow. that controls the odour from that part of the process. I need to find out what that noise is. I'll have to ask Brad later. Can you hear that, Mr. Singh? Yeah, I think that's... From what I remember him saying, this is where the sludge goes. Oh, 
So over here is where the sludge comes out. So you saw the sludge pipe and the and the barge pumping out the sludge yeah, from so the that ponds. Big black pipe. Big black pipe. And this is where it ends this, up. This is where it ends up. This is where it comes out. Okay. So so this is all the solid material from the bottom of the pond being pumped out into this drying pan where we where we dry it and that makes our biosolids. Um, which then we're looking for opportunities to reuse the biosolids. Um, and that might be things like applying it to land for a fertilizer or using it for um, making energy production or heating sort of applications. But at the moment we, we, we dry it and store the biosolids. Out of all the smells I've smelt today, this is the most pleasant. It's like and extra virgin. <laughs> <laughs> this is the next part of the process where we remove nitrogen from the, from the sewage. So this is what's called an activated sludge plant. And you see it's a nice chocolatey brown colour. That's actually what we're looking for in the process. Here we, we grow a lot of bacteria that do the conversion of nitrogen compounds to nitrate in this part of the process. And over here the nitrate turns into nitrogen gas and bubbles into the air. I'm, I'm just looking at it. It reminds me of a movie I saw once called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Or, or in my terms, just like a chocolate milkshake. Only crunchy. <laughs> so we've now got to the end of the process. So it's been through the 10 ponds. We've seen the bit where we made biogas from the carbon. We've seen the bit where we made nitrogen gas from the nitrogen in the water and got that out of the water. Now we've, the last ponds are about removing bacteria and viruses from the water. So here is the end product that we produce. Um, a lot different to what it looked like when it started. It looks crystal clear. It's, it's beautiful water. Is, is the water safe? No, it's safe for the right purpose. So this water we use for recycled water irrigation onto our farming land mm -hmm. on the property. We also take some and recycle it and use it for the market gardens in Werribee South that has some more treatment with ultraviolet light and with chlorine to make sure it's safe for contact with food crops. Um, and what's left gets discharged into Port Phillip Bay. And, and it's, so the water is suitable for each of those purposes. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate Pleasure. us today. No, it's been, I've, I've had fun. It gives me a whole different insight of what sewage is all about now. I actually thought that um, all the sewage water going into Port Phillip Bay was all contaminated water. So what I heard and hit, what I heard or thought has all been wrong. So and thank I, you very much. And I think it's what a lot of people have come away with is, is that sewage is not the waste that you throw away. It's actually a resource that we use for a lot of things. And, and that's, that's how we see our role is about how do we make the most out of what otherwise for Melbourne is a waste product. Okay, now the toilet area here is ready to start plumbing. So I'm going to start plumbing and put the new toilet in. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sink. Yes, Matt. Uh, question. Yeah. Are you a licensed plumber? Oh uh, yeah, I forgot. No, I'm not a licensed plumber. Okay. Yes, viewers out there, it is really important that you do use a, a licensed plumber to install a toilet or any plumbing fitting. Okay, mate, go ahead, job's yours. Okay, great, thanks, Mr. Sink. Okay, so now we're going to install the new toilet. All right, so first thing that we've got to do, uh, we've got this here knuckle elbow. Uh, now this goes directly in the pipe, in there, so we're going to have to cut this here pan collar off, we don't need that. So now we've got the knuckle bend, alright, and that is going to go straight into that pipe there, ready for the new toilet. Now we're going to, we've got to fix this here, back to the wall. All right. These are for the toilet to be held into position. So these brackets go on the ground like that, and then the toilet will go over it like that. All right, so there we go. So the toilet goes over the brackets. There we go. And now we'll get our screws. We've grabbed onto him there and we'll screw him in. All right, so now the toilet is in position. 
And now we're going to fix the cistern onto the pan. Okay, we have Matt from Personal Best Plumbing and this segment called Tricks of the Trade. We'd just like to ask a few questions. Sounds good. So we'll start with the first one. Um, what does a plumber actually do? Plum. Okay, <laughs> what does plum mean? Well, a plumber's job uh, consists of drainage pipes, water pipes, hot and cold water, mm -hmm. water services, and that type of thing. You know, fixing drain pipes and water leaks. New house installations means running new drainage pipes and new hot and cold water services. And then fitting off new kitchen sinks and showers and toilets. Wow, there's a long list there. Yeah, there's a there's a fair bit involved. There's plenty of plenty of things that a plumber does. Um, so tell me, what are the tricks of the what are the tricks of the trade in your job um, that you can share? Right. Okay. Uh, well, the golden rule to plumbing is that poo runs downhill. I oh, know. Okay. Yeah, that's the golden rule. <laughs> <laughs> and just. This is something that's been puzzling me for a while. Yeah. What is this thing about this plumber's crack? What does that mean? <laughs> that's a very interesting question. Well, a stereotype plumber has probably got a bit of a gut on him. Might smoke cigarettes and drink beer after a hard day's work. And as a result of that, his pants become a bit too low and below his belly line. Okay. And when he bends over at the back, you'll see, you'll see a crack. Ah, <laughs> so that's the plumber's crack. <laughs> that's the plumber's crack. Regulation five centimeters. So that's why you wear overalls. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, okay, Matt. Thanks for coming. Okay. And thanks for sharing all your knowledge and uh, some of the tricks of your trade. No worries. Thank Mr. you very much. Thank you. So I'm going to show you um, some of the do's and don'ts about keeping your toilet clean and caring for your toilet. These things here are a no. They tend to dissolve your washers, so they deteriorate much quicker than normal if you don't flush them enough. You're probably best off to use one of these guys here, which is just basically a... Um, same thing, still a tablet, but it hangs over the toilet bowl. Some people tend to use just your, your liquids like this here. Some people call them a toilet duck. Put them under the rim of the bowl, right around. Let it sit for say your, your half an hour or your 20 minutes. And again, just flush it. And it does leave quite a pleasant smell. So now I'm gonna show you what we call the Coke method of cleaning your toilet. It's a rather unorthodox method. You just basically get a bottle of Coke. You can see that the toilet's it's rather dirty and you just pour this right around around the walls of the toilet and we'll leave that there for about an hour and then we'll come back. Okay, so an hour's up. Now let's give it a whirl. Mmm, not bad. Looks pretty clean to me. Now there is another method, which um, as you, if you want to have a look inside this bowl, there is what we call a skid mark, thanks to Mr. Sink. Basically, the, the way to, to clean that up without too much effort is to just basically get a napkin, paper napkin like this, drain it with, with vinegar, and just rest it on there. I would normally use a, a pair of gloves for this, but you just leave it on there, let it soak for say half an hour, and then um, give it a flush. So we're gonna give it half an hour, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we've done our half an hour. If we look in there now, you'll find that the, the tissue is actually dissolved everywhere, and it has got rid of most of the, the skid mark there. And we'll just give it a flush. Not bad, I think it's done a good job. There is another thing that people do neglect about their toilet. It's their toilet brush. 
as you can see, this one here has had better days and it's quite gunky. So I'm going to show you how to clean this and how to keep it clean. So basically, you just like to keep, I mean, I'm, I'm just using a, um, a milk bottle, just cut up from the top, and you'll just fill that with, with a bleach. And just, if you know that you're cleaning your toilet, to have that nearby and just keep it there for say five, 10 minutes and it'll be nice and clean for you when you come back. So I'll leave it there for five minutes and see how we've gone, how we've gone with it. And we'll give it a bit of a try. Sprinkle a bit inside here. As you can see, it is still a little bit dirty, maybe because this one has been neglected, but you can see it's a lot cleaner. Now by doing that every time you have your weekly clean or whatever your cleaning habits are, you, you're guaranteed you're gonna have a nice fresh brush. All right, beauty, thank you. So we've got the holes there in the pan for the bolts to go through. We just sit him in position just like that. And that's on. Now we'll just put the, put the nuts here, screw them up from underneath. Get them both nice and tight. Beauty. All right, so this is the water connection from our our stop tap here into the bottom of the system. Tighten that one up. So now we'll put the lid on. Just plops on top like that. And that'll just sit on like that. So now the toilet has been installed and we've got the water connected. We're going to turn the water back on and fill her up and give her a flush. All ready to give it a flush. And that's it. It's complete. Okay. Thank you, Matt. See you next time on the Mr. Sink show. No worries, Mr. Sink. Now you're going to have to get out of the way because uh, I need to break in the toilet. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. So there you have it. We've learnt a lot about toilets. And poo too. And where it all goes. Next time on the Mr. Sink show, we're going to learn about showers. And this could be a tricky task. Now, look, we'd love to hear from you. So if you have any questions about today's show or any future projects that you may have, you can contact us on our website on www.mrsinktv.com.au. We hope you enjoyed today's show and see, see you, you next, next time. Hi, I'm Rob. I'm Dave. And I'm a, I'm a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We hope you enjoyed the show and see, see you, you next later. time. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? See you later! <laughs> it looks, it, it just looks wrong. Now you know when you make Milo and the Milo gets stuck on the top? <laughs> <laughs> crap comes from the word crapper. And uh, the inventor of the WC, the water closet, which we now call the toilet, his name was Thomas Crapper. And uh, that's where the word come from. So when you think about having a crap, you know where the word come from.